Effortlessness through effort, it is like peace through war by Yuji Krishnamurti. Hello there, this is PP Flower, author of the series of Kal Nan, available as ebook and paperback on Amazon.com. Link to my book is in the description box. It is free to read with Kindle Unlimited subscription. Today we will talk about meditation and emotional issues. I came across a story on this anonymous website for professionals. This guy in there was sharing his plight. He said that he is depressed looking at his peers. He has a net worth of $6 million uh, and $1.5 million annual income. And he made a big list of comparing his peers who were more successful than him, validating his sorry situation against peers to look for consolation. Of course, many may be behind him, you know, as far as the net worth goal is considered. But most people on that website are just there to brag, you know, just like any other social media platform. It is all about outshining the other. But this guy bought into it. Even with a good amount of saving, he is super insecure. Now this kind of situation falls under psychological or mental disorder because there is no apparent tangible thing the situation arose from other than comparison. And that comparison is not going to go away unless you become immune or shut yourself out from this world. It could also be because you have certain goals and even when you reach them your threshold keeps increasing like I have said before in my many podcasts so it's intangible some people are more prone to psychological issues naturally these problems don't discriminate when it comes to picking who it would latch on so it looks like money is not a factor at all with mental disorders therefore it is safe to say that abundance or lack of money doesn't create nor solve mental, emotional, spiritual or psychological problems. So it got me thinking, what could it be then? Of course, scientists have researched and come up with uh, chemical imbalance as the issue. They even prescribe medications which artificially stimulate the chemical balance. And our body and this universe actually is in perfect balance even with all the chaos that is in there it settles on its own after a storm but when science tries to externally manipulate the body functions by understanding a problem in isolation and not body as a whole it is bound to cause issues somewhere somewhere else in the body and as our inner workings are interdependent on other functions that are going on in the body. But that is studied under side effects by these scientists. And most of the time, if the side effect underweighs the benefit, these drugs make it to be administered mainstream by prescription or as over-the-counter medication. You should read the list of side effects these pharma companies um, you know, print out with all these prescription medications it is hilarious and eye-popping at the same time covers everything from now until death that could happen <laughs> what is it solving i see the cases in psychological issues only increasing and yuji pointed out that meditation does the same in the sense the same as the drugs do it alters the chemical balance in our body making you crave it like addiction you need that stimulation constantly to feel that high I personally did meditation f I practiced it for about six months or so and in yoga also and I was in the best shape of my life and felt invigorated all day long but I had to dedicate the time needed to recharge myself every day and slowly I realized it was addictive I was programming my body to make that a necessity was something wrong with it well it's up to you I mean I was not ready to be dependent on more than 
one thing to ensure my body functioned well, so I quit. Now I want to weigh boredom with respect to psychological issues and explore and see what happens when you meditate. Yuji had some interesting insight on meditation and yoga. As per him, first thing to do was to eat properly. Once your body is in perfect condition by self-control and self-discipline, then the next step of physical discipline should even arise. And then perhaps pranayam, uh, after mastering that comes questioning and then meditation. And he added that meditation produces disorder, like I mentioned earlier, because of the chemical level stimulation it induces. But for the most of us, meditation is often the first step. We skip everything else and straight away run for meditation because we heard some stories and we want to jump on the bandwagon. Meditation is warfare. That's what Yuji had said. So let's look into it. Thoughts get bombarded into you as a mechanism to um, address boredom and generates this non-physical impulse or stimulus. Okay, as human beings, we are bombarded with thoughts all the time. And Yuji had said that something very intriguing about thoughts. He said, you can't empty the ocean. So this stream of thoughts wants you to keep doing something, keep moving forward towards a goal. Your body or brain in specific fans the antenna perhaps to receive and host all kind of thoughts. In fact, some meditation techniques encourage to allow this, the flow of thoughts in you. But then there is something coded inside you at the physical level that rejects all this. There is constant conflict, but you have to force and program your body to sit still during meditation. And in my series, All Kalnan, I have theorized that there is something called mind web or mind network that our brain is a receptor for. It receives hosts and processes thoughts endlessly. And the more power or processing capacity your brain has for this endless feed, the more intelligent you are. So essentially, this meditation is against this mind network mechanism. It is like you have an open frequency on a radio, but you somehow want it to not acknowledge it. You want it to be silent when it is tuned to receive different frequencies, when that is all it does. Unless you block the reception or fry the receiver in the radio, this stillness is impossible to achieve. That is why Yuji had said that true meditation will damage your brain. And he gave a parallel to what the drugs do to us. It eventually damages the brain processing power. Yuji had said that effortlessness through effort, it is like peace through war. And he also said that uh, the peace of mind you want is an extension of this war of effort and struggle. So meditation is warfare. Now, there is another realized soul in the state of Karnataka. He was actually, he's no more. Uh, his name was Ajja. He had mentioned the one who closed his eyes during meditation is not meditating at all because he was referring to the word dhyana as the right word that is even close to meditating. So dhyana in Sanskrit means uh, meditation. It is derived from the root words dhi meaning receptacle or the mind and yana meaning moving or going and alternate root word dhyai means to think of. So it is very hard to get to the etymology of words anymore because this documentation is a gift of Kalyug or Dark Age, as I have referred in my series All Kalnan. Prior to this age, it was word to mouth in the Gurukul, where the gurus would verbally teach their disciples everything that they knew. So the actual origin of our Indic culture dates back further than 5,000 years, but the Veda documented this only when we entered Kalyug or the Dark Age. Anywho, for the word Dhyana, it clearly says that it is to think of 
and not to go against the thoughts that naturally invade us. So this kind of technique to train yourself to numb yourself or go thoughtless by resisting yourself from the constant bombardment of thoughts is like opening yourself to radiation. I have theorized in my series All Kalman that radiation is an expedited memory reconciliation or death. It is deletion of memory of everything in you until you hit the root elements. And when you meditate to such an extent that it cuts off the thought, you know that which makes you, you, ends. And it is the end of you. Maybe it's my theory that this can cause radiation effects in cancer, but it has been seen and documented in many who have followed intense Kriya meditation. One such example was Dr. Bhaskar, who meditated intensely and was practicing celibacy and had gone schizophrenic. And now we need mental Ill illness like this so that pharma and other businesses like psychiatrists can go on. You know, we need people like this who are suffering. They all have a place to fill in. Anything in this creation is of this creation by pb flower <laughs> we cannot throw anything out once it has come to exist the psychological issues or the ones fixing it but then again some people are built in a way that they naturally go into a meditative state as an extension of natural state it's more of an after effect than effort sitting idle comes easy to them their body is not in conflict, perhaps, for them meditation is like second nature. And it reminds me of a term in biology, homeostasis. It is a state of steady internal physical and chemical conditions maintained by a living system. This is the condition of optimal functioning for the organism and includes many variables such as body temperature and fluid balance being kept with certain preset limits homeostatic range of course um, these limits are set by doctors but it is the closest in scientific terms to what UG had said that our body has to be at optimal balance for you to begin yoga and then question and then graduate on to meditation and so for someone who does it by force and does not follow this order and has no natural inclination it is a warfare for them. It is a biological warfare. And that's why Yuji suggested for some people to meditate and for some to not. So he was not totally against it. And therefore, you are your best judge. Like me, I am very active, but my mind is very still. So I'm physically active, but my mind is very still. And my husband is a total couch potato, but his mind is on an override all the time and so meditation for the both of us was not going to work as our physical body was up to challenges I have the itch to move around and my husband cannot stop thinking and Yuji had said a mind is everywhere and so benefits of mindfulness if you see it's all linked to material world meditation promises that hold on mind you know, how swiftly you can do your work, how well you can manage your busy life, how peaceful you can be in an otherwise chaotic world. So mindfulness possibly is training the mind. Like in gym, you train the body, which is nothing but physical endurance. Or in other words, stressing yourself, you know, harass it, punch it, push it, strengthen it. And so for a hyperactive mind, Meditation will need excessive force, like in the gym, you need more enduring exercises to build prominent muscles like six packs. <laughs> but a hyperactive mind can't let go of things, as I said, unless the receptor is damaged. So real meditation is when you are doing your day to day work, but you can still let go, disconnect, disassociate, disengage from everything and go into the void. At the end of the day maybe that's what people called ajja going into samadhi 
And I have this practice elaborated in my series All Kalnan, where my main character runs on pure energy by sun gazing and following it, following the sun gazing practice by Smyrna and Samadhi, or remembrance and oneness. So what we call meditation is just imitation, replication of what others are doing in hope to achieve something better or be a better functioning human being. When the focus should be on the body and not controlling the mind network by blocking thoughts, like going celibate by imitated celibacy. If you are struggling with thoughts guiding you in the opposite direction, then it is better to get it out of your system than forcing it. So what I'm trying to point out is meditative and yoga postures are natural actions coming out of people or from within people and others started imitating when they saw the benefit in others like how yuji used to assume some classic yoga poses while being in the crowd naturally it just so happened to be his natural state that he would sit like that Yoga and meditation have their benefits. When you are clear, it's for material gain only to function better in this world, but only when it is following the chronology I mentioned earlier by Yuji. There is a saying in yoga, Hatat na balat, which means not by conviction, not by force. I hope I pronounce that well because my husband always gets mad at my pronunciations. <laughs> anyway, of course, there is Hatha Yoga, which is a branch not as ancient as the traditional yoga, where it says not by conviction, not by force, because Hatha Yoga is all about force. And that is something you can research on as I do not subscribe to that branch. It is from the 15th century CE. If you want to look into it, please go ahead. Because meditation and yoga are all about stillness and not at the level of gymming so that's why hot yoga doesn't make any sense to me now let's look into mantra chanting because that's another thing that has been done to control the mind network or to streamline it to streamline the thoughts that invade us are there benefits to mantra chanting and rituals the question is also that would they help you merge with non-existent because that's also a promise it makes again these are purely objective like becoming proficient in something or your daily life improving your health and not subjective things like dissolving your ego or you becoming realized there is no mysticism outside to the tangible benefits from it it is a ritual again to all that practice it religiously every day for hours together also, mantras are repetition of some words that probably came out of sages like Yuji. Yuji was a sage as he channeled ethereal into him. He was not interested in teaching, preaching, or uplifting the population. He was ranting what came to him, free of thoughts. So, again, the classic example of mantras is... The one supposedly about death, the Maha Mrityunjay Mantra. I will leave a link below in case you want to check it out. I don't want to say it because I'm going to mutilate it. This Maha Mrityunjay Mantra is a chanting about how your transition from life to death should be, how it should happen. And the metaphor uh, drawn is to a ripe melon separating from the stem gracefully. It happens on its own without any effort. Now, whoever first put it in poetry uh, was simply trying to make it into an analogy. A simplification or just what poets do best, draw a parallel to what we can understand from our knowledge. But now it's just knowledge for us, a technique and mechanical repetition of what a sage once spit out. Again, turned into a ritual. It's like any quote from UG that we repeat, that I repeat in my podcasts. So when we try to make it a mantra, it is nothing but a formula. Formula works best with numbers as they are unchangeable and constant, not with individuals. We are unique. Now this Mahamrityunjay mantra was by a sage who invoked or invited death 
onto him, aware of how painful the idea of dying might be, yet the sage wanted to die and merge into the ocean. However, now that we got hold of it, we repeated for whatever material gains, but would never dare to invite Shiva actually inside us, as that sage originally did. When I was diagnosed with cancer, my husband had arranged for this Mahamrityunjaya Mantra. Uh, because we also thought it would benefit us and it might like I said nothing is a formula but by the odds of randomness you might benefit if your alignment is the same as that sage who originally chanted it by the same logic certain meditation certain philosophy fills you up for a short while you feel as if you have got an answer like these self-claimed non-dualists but we are all driving on an endless highway with no destination you can make rides comfortable crash the car too prematurely in this endless drive or resort to mantras meditation yoga rituals overcome the mundane or the depression that comes from it but please don't behave like these non-dualists that took the wrong exit as they got lost and since there is no escape from this game of life they found their way back to the highway at another point in time <laughs> as that was the only way and now they are screaming hey hey i found the way i came back well no shit sherlock that was the only way so yeah you sure found your way back now if you stayed in the lost path and gathered others and brought them back with you that is a different story but you are yelling after coming back to the highway where the rest of us were already there struggling and playing the game of life what's the freaking big deal but then again we need these kind of people to give mentally unstable ones some kind of temporary peace or hope that there is something else out there which by the way was nothing because they came back to everything to train spiritual narcissism as they get bloated with spiritual superiority there are yet another kind of people who have accepted that it's good to reject the religious establishment and everything else that it stands for so they try to bash them and embrace whatever is cool or appealing as per the current standards whatever is trending is cooler um, if you look at the indic ancient texts they were less of doctrines or moral codes and more of people who were crazy almost that's why yuji said they were high on so much juice perhaps yuji dismissed these as he didn't like the control it brought in with the caste system etc or becoming a respect driven culture belief system rooting duality or separation but if i'm a material person and i accept to play the game of life and continue to drive on this endless road or the highway and make my journey more comfortable then there's nothing wrong why not get some nice car get upgraded seats throw in some snacks for the ride etc now back to the mental issues depression is root of philosophies you know the one i'm giving here or the one people in depression go looking for philosophical outlets why are we even reflecting on things trying to make sense of how to live or finding out whys of life? It's all tied to depression where you are upset with outcomes and you can't vent out the anger or frustration. Depression turns into reflection and reflection becomes addictive. It's like dogs sucking on bone and their gums start to bleed but it thinks it got blood from the bone and starts enjoying. This was Yuji's comparison, by the way, about getting nowhere, but thinking we are getting somewhere. But all we are doing is taking wrong exit and getting back in the game with the feeling of being found again in new light. So existence, meaning all, is root derivative of non-existence, which is none. Or desire is what that came from darkness then derivative of desire is depression because now it is aware of more possibilities hopes 
derivative of that depression is what spawns life philosophy a man who has come to terms with his desires doesn't have time for philosophy to reflect about life at least people i've seen it is only when they reflect on life that they faced depression because when you reflect you start comparing comparing with others or comparing with the goals that you have set or comparing with what you think you deserve Adjo used to say referencing Bhagavad Gita first you have to understand Vishad Yoga or the yoga of despondency it was in reference to Arjun who was looking for reasons to quit before anything happened <laughs> he was a great warrior but was overpowered by grief and delusion born out of sense of attachment to his extended family that he was at war with in his deceptive state he made several misleading arguments to support his decision not to fight them you know not to fight his cousins and brothers and others all of his relatives that were standing against him of course he was steered back to follow his dharma by krishna kind of like an army warrior goes to war killing innocent people sometimes for the love of country or duty for his country but if that army personnel quits even before going to war then it is speculative assessment hypothetical and ajay used to say if worry becomes contemplation material life itself turns into spiritual life but then is it really the life we want the spiritual life or perhaps it's not the path to become yug or aja but just a coping mechanism that we are looking the broken ones are looking for the ones who are lost despondency or vishad is the base of any revolution when it becomes circular or stagnant meaning when it remains in itself then it leads to self depression atma glani and suicide but when it comes out of itself and moves forward and becomes a journey then it leads to self revolution atma kranti and it is observed that the despondency of arjun who is representing all the human beings that are going through some kind of psychological issues is not in itself circulating or stagnant so there remains the possibilities of his self realization because he's still speculating that's why despondency has also been called yoga as this is the state from which one embarks on the inward journey or self realization of knowing one's true self of course that is all in gita so copied and replicated again by me now this means that one who has never been depressed will likely never have the need to reflect on life or at least seriously to an extent that it affects day to day living this is a good way to spot a fake someone faking to be depressed that's why i feel contrary to what is outlined in religious texts that only few are chosen for the great spiritual pursuit or god gives punishments to test faith etc it's actually the people who go on with their life and the mundane activities with no intention to end the game of life or liberation you know fully into the game they are the ones that keep the creation going in line with desires these people who invent you know things and are sure about what they want in life um they go about their daily lives and have endless desires the one of anomalies who escape this game by chance create this pull in other directions especially more so in people with history of depression depression might be cured with something like drugs therapy or even these gurus or grace of something but effects of these are long lasting and effort is continuous it changes the person as there is a system that it replaces that depression the coping mechanism is one that takes over and there is no roll back to who you were the ideas that now make you you have changed the dynamics 
they're all changing anyway so it doesn't make sense as it's like societal conditioning there is no going back once conditioning infects you for a person of faith faith is right for them but please don't sell it to me for a person of moral code morality is right for them but don't sell it to me same for various doctrines including atheism or even science they're all beliefs don't sell it to me life is a marketplace and there are sellers <laughs> and buyers for everything everything a business transaction is taking place everywhere for many this might come as a surprise but you can still believe in a personal god and continue to admire yuji or any other sage yuji bashed all belief systems but there are many belief systems that are tied to our survival in society as we know me bashing that would only be an imitation replication of what yuji had done so i will repeat a quote from my series in conclusion anything in this creation is of the creation and so it is deserving of everything from this creation we cannot throw a concept out but at the same time it cannot be a formula well thank you for listening this is author pb flower signing off bye bye